Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Got another cool vlog today and it's a little bit different to what we usually do. Got an Audi S3 in 8v2 um, on a 17 plate and it's having our PE Stage 1 ECU software and TCU software and the intake system which we recommend. And I just thought it'd be quite a cool video to do some intake testing because we often get asked what intake systems are the best for these cars and we've tested, uh, I was saying, near enough every popular intake system for this car or this engine let's say the, the latest two litre turbo NQB cars for the S3s, Golf R's, Cupra's, um, GTI's and this is a setup we've been running on all our cars. It's, it's a brilliant system um, and it consists of the incredibly popular 600, uh, sorry R600 intake but we go with the forged turbo intake pipe has a coupler by here, um, so we'll show you that, but <coughs> when you look at it in comparison to the OEM intake, what I'll do, I'll get this intake off, so you've got the intake and the turbo intake pipe, so I will get the OEM intake off and then we'll just put it side by side, just compare a few lot of differences. The car's already strapped down on the dyno and it's good to go, so we'll get some stock runs out of it, see what it does on stock, install the intake system and see what the intake system improves the performance by purely just adding the intake and the uh, turbo intake pipe. And then we'll put our PE Stage 1 ECU and TCU tune on there and show you what it makes. But, just wanted to quickly show you this because it's a really lovely motor. Had it for a little while now, a Toyota Supra. This is pretty similar to what we did on the previous vlog of the M140 where it had our um, handling package and our PE Stage 1 Plus ECU tune. So we've got a downpipe to go on it. It's already had the suspension installed, but I just want to show you this car because it's such a lovely looking car. I'm not too sure what the colour is. Um, but just look how amazing this is. It's already sat on our um, on our handling package and obviously we've got the spaces on there as well so it sits lovely, handles lovely as well. So yeah, as everyone knows, these are a BMW Z4 B58 motor in there. So we've got a downpipe, but this is probably my favorite angle of the car. This rear end just looks so good such a lovely looking car but at the moment suspension's on we've got upgrade down pipe to go on there and then we'll crack on with the tuning but that's for another vlog so we'll crack on with the s3 and show you what it does so the oem intake is off it's really simple to get it off requires literally the basic of tools you literally just need a t20 t30 a ratchet um, and a little seven mil um, hex to undo this part. Other than that, comes out very, very easily. But a few little differences with this. One thing, so you've obviously we've got two air feeds, but you can see the one is blocked up. So the main air feed on the OEM system is through here. Um, so it comes through here, runs along here, straight into the air box. However, if you have a look on so we've got here, so the main air feed comes in through here and here, but on the intake system, this part is blank. So this air feed does very little on the OEM system. But when you have a look on the R600, you can see we've got utilizing both air feeds. So that is nice and large and that is nice and large. So that, that's one of the benefits. And obviously we've got a slightly larger diameter um, air feed as well but in terms of the air box the air box is designed pretty well um, but the main difference is, is the surface area of the aftermarket uh, filter is a lot greater so we can absorb a little bit more air offers still really good filtration for the car as well so obviously no debris gets into the turbo but the main difference for me why I choose the four turbo intake pipe over some of the other uh, intakes is the elbow. So airflow does not like changes in direction, whether it's um, whether it's 90 degrees or if it's going around a bend, 
airflow flows really really nicely if everything's nice and uniform in terms of diameter and the direction of which is traveling and if you can see yes some people upgrade these to a metal um, elbow but you can see where it kind of bottlenecks just by here um, so the airflow will come in here and go into the turbo but with the force turbo intake pipe we've got a nice uniform diameter throughout the whole of the pipe slightly larger than the OEM pipe and you haven't got this perforated part here so it doesn't disturb the airflow but the main improvement is this reducer or coupler whatever you choose to call it but the reducer so it sits in here and then sits within the turbo itself and this allows the air the transition the air to go through the pipe and slowly reduce down into this uh, nice uniform coupler into the turbo and if you can have a look uh, I don't know if I'll be able to do it with one hand but it's just not so much of a bottleneck nice and smooth uh, for the airflow as well so yeah this is personally why I use this over some of the other upgraded intake systems which uses a slightly larger um, diameter elbow but it's still a restriction whereas this is a lot nicer so what I'll do now is go ahead, install the intake system. I'll show you all how it sounds. Yes, it's a fully enclosed system, but you will hear a little bit of extra intake noise from it as well. So yeah, we'll get that all installed and uh, show you how it sounds. And then obviously do some testing. So intake system and forged turbo intake pipe all installed. Nice fitment on it as well. And if you look, it looks very OEM plus, so I'm happy with that. But if you're wondering, this coolant line you can buy relocation kit or relocation pipe which goes underneath um, but to you nobody ever opts for it but if you have a look here we've got two intake pipe here maximizes the space here which isn't a lot but you can see it's a lot larger diameter and then we've got let me get a quick torch and we've got the coupler or reducer which goes into the turbo which sits here and then obviously we've got the pipe which goes over it so yeah nice uniform diameter and if you have a look at what we had originally uh, this would have been there so this part goes into the turbo and we've got the pipe which goes onto the from the air box so yeah that's all sorted but one quick thing we'll show you quickly how it sounds because this particular car has got a res delete so it sounds a little bit fruitier than your normal S3 um, but let's see if we can hear a little bit of turbo induction noise so initial on so we'll have a couple of beeps because uh, we've got a kind of dyno mode, everything set up on a dyno with a hard X disconnected. But I hope the mic is picking it up. Yeah, I hope the mic is picking it up, but you can hear a lot more induction noise. Not as much as you would for an open filter, uh, but it certainly does sound nice. See if we can put it in dynamic. Again, I don't know if the mic is picking up the turbo induction noise, but it does sound a lot nicer. So yeah, we'll crack on with some dyno testing.
So, just finished this S3 HV2 um, 310 version. Uh, it's running our PE Stage 1 ECU and TCU tune. And obviously we've done some testing with and without the intake and the results are really interesting. It's a pretty strong car, this one for an S3. Um, should just mention that this intake system can be applied to the, all the two litre turbo MQB cars. Um, so you've got your S3 Golf R, Cupra, um, GTI Club Sport and your regular GTI, but you'll produce slightly different figures, obviously, because you've got a different turbo, the IS20 turbo. But let's have a look at the results. And like I said, this car was a 310 version and in factory form it did bang on 310 horsepower and 450 Nm. So we've got this red curve up, you can see it. Red curve here, that's your red, I'm um, sorry, that's your power curve and that's your stock torque curve. So this is what the car produced without no hardware, 310 horsepower and 450 Nm. And then again, the car was still in factory form on the ECU and then we installed the intake and we gained 10 horsepower and around about six Nm on the torque. Not a huge increase on the torque and I'll explain why that is, but you can see we gained a good nine horsepower on the torque. And if you take a look, we've got this blue line here this is your stock curve with the intake and you can see around about four and a half thousand, five thousand RPM. Power curve just keeps flying and the torque curve is fairly linear as well. Just giving you a little bump in torque as well. So with our PE ECU and TCU tune stage one, we typically quote for these around about 365 to 375 horsepower. And this car did bang on in the middle. So with our software, with no hardware, we see 372 horsepower and 485 newton meters. You usually see a little bit more on torque, but you see around about 500 newton meters. But that's what this car did with just our software and no intake system. And if you have a look here, we've got the green curve, nice linear power curve, nice flat torque curve all the way. And then we installed the intake system, no alterations to the software, so we're still just running our PE stage one ECU and TCU tune with the intake system. And as you can see, and make some mega numbers. Don't usually see as high as this. This one did 389 horsepower or just shy 390 horsepower and 493 newton meters. Usually we see around about 385 horsepower with the intake and our software. Um, but this particular car, a little bit stronger than most, did a little bit more. As you can see again, from around about four and a half, five thousand RPM, the power curve with the intake is this yellow line, gold line just carries on climbing and then up top is where we've got our biggest delta gains so yeah but made some mega numbers nice smooth power curve and torque curve but if you think about it it does make sense why peak torque hasn't really changed so much because peak torque is usually around about the three to four thousand rpm on these cars and if you think because we've got the larger diameter pipe bin if you're not requesting any more torque or any more boost from the car low down, it's gonna take a little bit longer for the air to fill up that void or, or, or the extra volume within the pipes. So that is the reason why it doesn't produce a huge amount of power um, increase throughout the mid range in terms of torque. But with a larger diameter pipe, when the engine revs are higher and there's a greater volume of air flowing, that is why up top, where there's more volume of air, we're making more power. So once a car is up into the four and a half, five thousand RPM range where the car is really singing, the turbo is really producing good boost, that is where we're seeing the greater gain. So yeah, what was it? Around about 16 horsepower we're just putting on the intake system is mega numbers. So really happy with that. But we do a package for this car consisting of this setup. It's on our website. If you have a look under the packages section, you'll see it all there. Um, so everything can be bought and supplied and fitted at our website. So yeah, if you're interested in this package, get in touch. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed, I hope you enjoyed this vlog of intake testing on the MQB cars. Um, yeah, if this is of interest to you, get in touch. But thank you for watching and see you in the next one.